Hey, it's Deborah Atkinson. Look, it's not all smoothies all the time here. We don't wanna make the mistake of getting too little protein if we're exercising. So whether you're starting an exercise routine, you're trying to stick with it or get back to the exercise routine, if you're a woman over 40, definitely over 50, even more so over 60 and 70, we can't make the mistake of doing the exercise but not getting the fuel. The parts you need for building muscle are those essential amino acids and protein. But it's not just smoothies. Even for me, I have two blenders on my counter at all time. I can't play favorites, but I also wanna show you some of my very favorite and very simple resources for creating high protein meals, either last minute or on the go, or to make it a batch and stick in the freezer. Here we go. Like any good soup, you're gonna start with a saute of those veggies. This very first one that I'm sharing with you is coconut seafood chowder, Thai coconut seafood chowder. So you can tell it's got a little Asian ethnic flavoring in it meaning there's probably a little ginger in it. There's definitely a little coconut in it almost always. The one thing you may or may not want to eat is the lemongrass. So for me, I find it really hard to get that right and to not find little pieces of it in the soup, but totally up to you. But here's what I did. So originally this was a chicken chowder and you could make it that way if you really don't like seafood but I've lightened it up with seafood. And the reason is it's a little bit easier to digest. So if you struggle with seafood and we all need to be a little bit more conscious of the spike protein, if you're curious about that, put a note down below, but that in our poultries, chicken and even turkey, I know. You just start cooking your veggies, your carrots, your celery and onions. By the way, if you want a quick cheat, you can buy those put together already at most supermarkets. So if you're looking for shortcuts, I also bake my cod ahead of time and we're going to use sweet potatoes later. I bake those too. You can see my bone broth option is kettle and fire. Love that. And if I'm going to use broth of any kind, I'm going to use bone broth. Why wouldn't we add the extra protein? So it's a great way to get some protein and the collagen that we want for hair, skin, nails, joints, all of it. So very good. So you're going to bring that to a boil and cover it, adding in the cooked cod, a little bit of lime, squeezing that lime juice. That's what gives it a little ethnic flair. So none of this is difficult, I promise you, or I wouldn't be making it but you wanna do this in the morning or sometime when you can leave it sitting on the stove because as those flavors marinate, that's where the goodness of this comes in, what makes soup the best. This is canned coconut milk, full fat, or you can use a light one, up to you. Crab meat, so decadent, yes, a little bit more pricey if you're looking at cost of food. You could leave it out, you could go with more cod, you could go with salmon, you could go with shrimp, totally up to you. Chili powder, flakes, so we're giving it a little spice. There's also ginger in here. You get all the goods in here. You've got shrimp, I've got cod, I've got crab, and those are probably the three I've used this time, but anything goes, it's you. If you're a salad lover, this one's for you. This is so easy. And it's not just, though, a salad that you throw together. You have to do a little premeditation, and you actually want to cook your beets the day you're going to use them because beets sitting in the refrigerator that have been roasted are just going to get mushy, and you can't leave them sitting on the counter. So you actually have to premeditate this one. It takes about 40 minutes to actually roast them, but it takes some time to peel your beets, slice them super thin, and look, there's no way around this. A mandolin isn't gonna do it. You're gonna have to slice them by hand. The redness comes off your fingers. Here's an inside trick. This is also ooey gooey and scientific and I hope I don't lose you here, but do you wanna know what the transit rate in your gut is? One way to know is how quickly beets go through you. So don't get alarmed if tomorrow or the next day your stool is red, it doesn't mean you're sick, but it means that from the point you ate it till that stool being red, that's your transit time. 
Now, you wanna check on that because if it's days later, that's slow and you probably wanna do something about that because the healthier you are, you also don't want it to come like that, right? But probably within 12 to 24 hours, so if you have it for dinner, it might be the next day. So you wanna pay attention to that because that also is somewhat a measure of health. If you're constipated and or if you have diarrhea, it means you're not absorbing the foods you want and you're not eliminating toxins that we don't want and wanna get rid of. Once you do the prep for this one, it comes together so fast. You're going right, to roast you your beets and one, carrots for about 40 you, minutes. You, you can add any protein that you that want to the top, and you're going to blend that cashew dressing in about a minute. So, so easy. It's next, too, or so easy, you don't need a tour guide. It's just scrambled eggs and salmon, and they are minimalist recipes. So these are ones that are go-tos when you're just really in a pinch and you need it right now. Here's something to keep in mind. Not everybody tolerates eggs. They can be one of those foods we are most likely to become sensitive to, meaning they don't agree with you. There's no way to know for sure until you remove them, do an elimination phase of a diet, reintroduce them. But I'm going to put them in here because a lot of us do tolerate them. They're just one of those foods you don't want to have every single day for breakfast or for your lunch or your dinner. So if you're defaulting to that every day and struggling to lose weight or feeling just not your best, that can be partially because of eggs. So just take a good look at that for yourself and consider removing them. But if you tolerate them, you know, one or two times a week, probably not going to hurt anything in you. It's a really easy way to get a high protein meal. But here's the caveat. I'm suggesting five eggs because each egg has six grams of protein. That gets you that 30 grams of protein minimum that you need at each meal for muscle protein synthesis. And next up, pay attention to the salmon. Buy wild. If you tolerate eggs and you know it, you still want them in and just infrequently in your diet, maybe one or two times a week, but this is a go-to. And yes, I've got five eggs in there. I'm going to use that. You can just add a little cheese to the top really fast, but of course, try and get veggies in. So you could do greens and saute them first. You could do veggies left over or cook a few. Super easy. This is it. And that gets you to that minimum threshold of 30 grams of protein. This is plant-based Parmesan. So choose your weapon. All right, this, super easy. So a salmon filet lemon juice, olive oil, or lemon slices, olive oil, sea salt, and then you could also add anything. Rosemary, sage, your choice. Bake it, 400, boom. You like scallops? Actually, I'm taking a poll because it seems like women do, guys don't. I don't get it. More for us. So scallops are also really easy to whip up at home, and it feels like you're having a decadent, really special meal. So I get it on rare occasions when I have company, or I get it regularly just to treat myself. Why are we waiting? <laughs> You're going to love this. I did this with a friend who was visiting, who I took to the Grand Canyon on a hike, and she is not familiar with the kitchen at all. So I gave her assignments as we did it, and it came together like that. You first want to rinse your scallops, then you're going to pat them dry with paper towels just to make sure you've got any preservatives that may have been used off. You put them on a skillet, literally a hot skillet with ghee. I use ghee anyway. And garlic takes about two minutes per side. And then you're going to melt or <laughs> thaw frozen peas in a pot, a couple of seconds. Here's our scallops coming along. You're going to blend the peas with some spice, not much, and spinach. That's your sauce. But look at the eye appeal that this will have. So imagine on a white plate, you've got green sauce, and you can do any design work you want. My accomplice in the kitchen really had a good time spreading it out, creating a design, okay, and really playing with yet. our food, essentially. And then we place the scallops on top. So it's fun. There's a little gourmet feel to it, but it is so simple and comes together in minutes, even if you're doing it yourself. It is literally spinach, frozen peas, little garlic, 
your ghee. You want to cook your scallops in either ghee or butter. I use ghee because it's clarified. Even if you don't tolerate dairy, potentially you'll do okay with that. So, you know, think about 30 grams of protein, what that looks like. Don't shortchange yourself. And generally scallops go down easy. So here you go. High protein. You got your veggies right there. You might be done, but a decadent dessert comes with it would be great. Okay, you didn't think I was gonna let you get out of here without at least one smoothie. This is a favorite smoothie bowl. So in the summer of 2023 in Phoenix, where I live, we had about six weeks of temperatures over 115. It was like a record breaking year I didn't wanna be a part of. <laughs> so every day was just hot, never cooled off. So this one became a staple at my house. It was either a after dinner dessert or it's so high in protein and in collagen and I add creatine to it that it tastes like dessert but you could have it for breakfast or as a pre-workout smoothie smoothie bowl. I put it in a bowl because it actually is whipped up if you get the right ratio of ice and mango and you don't put too much liquid in you can get it as thick as you want. Choose your milk alternative. I do protein, collagen, and creatine, fruit and ice. Taco Tuesday, Taco Wednesday, Taco Thursday. I don't know about you, but I could eat Mexican food all week long. So there's so much that you can do with this. I mean, obviously there's traditional tacos. I don't like to use corn shells, so I will substitute and use uh, cassava uh, shells, or I'll use something like jicama. And so it's very low carb. I'll use brown rice tortillas and actually just use it as a tortilla instead of trying to fold it up. I'll make bowls. So there's so many things you can do. And I will use the tortilla. I'll bake that. I'll put a little black bean sauce on the top, put the taco meat on the top and some cheese. And now it's a taco pizza, but still with no gluten, no wheat, and doesn't have to have cheese. You can put fake plant cheese on if you want to, totally up to you. But there's so much that you can do with this. And making a one batch, I always make two. So it's just me, but I buy two pounds of, maybe it's beef and I might buy two pounds of that, or bison, venison, elk, and keep two pans going at once. I'll make two, freeze one, keep the other one going, and generally for me, it's gone in a couple of days. Making it with a variety of things, not the same thing, it's not always tacos, but tacos are so easy, and if you decide you're gonna go low carb, again, you just use romaine lettuce leaves or butter lettuce leaves and go really low carb. Sometimes, other times, add those carbs, because you know we need them for energy. You will find me making this almost every week with elk or venison or bison, and I'm adding onions and garlic and then some vegetable. Mushrooms here, sometimes cabbage. The sexiest thing in my kitchen, right next to the blender, is the slow cooker. Look, I know I never got on the Instapot craze, and I know people who bought it Instapots who actually don't use them. I love the slow cooker because it actually makes your house smell so very good when it's cooking. Do you know that that's really good for your digestion? It's like walk into the house at grandma's on Thanksgiving. You immediately smell it, your digestive juices get going. That actually helps you digest food. So it's got some additional incentives. Now, if you forgot to do all that and do the prep, you guys with an Instapot, you got your back covered. But here's one of my favorites. And one of the reasons I love lamb is because it's high in omega-3 fats. So you may not think of lamb first or foremost, you think of maybe beef and you know, few people default to lamb, but one of the things it's known for is a high omega-3 fat, which means it helps to decrease inflammation. Super good. And most of us can't get enough omega-3s because every food that we eat has omega-3s and omega-6s, and we're trying to have more omega-3 than omega-6. So here we go. This one creates a huge batch. So unless you're cooking for a whole bunch, you also have a meal, you have some for the refrigerator for the week, and you've got a whole stash to put in your freezer for those days when 
you know, you forgot to prepare something and you start looking for fast food, thaw it out in five minutes. The only real time consuming thing here is you do want to brown the meat before you drop it in, but you can go more or less potatoes depending on your carb wants. I'd love to know what your favorite is. And if you want this list, drop your name down below, drop a comment, and I'll make sure that you all get the recipe. But sometimes it's forks, sometimes it is spoons, whether it's soups or smoothies. But no matter what you prefer, if you love your meat or you're a veggie girl, you can find something to give you high protein to build that lean muscle and optimally fuel and fire your energy level and your body composition. If you want a little help, check the resources down below.